It seems that you have not been completely forthcoming with me, Whitney. I've told you what you needed to know. Hardly. You were probably on duty when the formula went missing. Now I learn that you were on duty when it was returned. Imagine the coincidence. I hate coincidence. You can't prove that it ever left the reading room unless you know who took it or who returned it. Who was it, Mr. Holmes? Don't make yourself absurd, Whitney. While turnabout may be fair play, you don't possess the acumen or the information to bring it off. What is the connection between Pratt's murder and the return of the formula? There isn't one. The formula never left the office. It's perfectly sealed. Everything's in order. All your assertions are demonstrably false. But as an ostrich has more curiosity than yourself, and because I think you actually believe them, I won't waste my time. When will you return to the Ministry? I'll toddle back after my bath. Don't bother coming down. In my official capacity, you will find me a less pliant witness than at present. That will be a treat. I think you have forgotten that whatever its outcome, you are not blameless in this affair. Cooperation may serve your interests. I think you should get dressed, Mr. Whitney. Now. Oh, very well. You might give a man some privacy. That is classified government property, Mr. Holmes. In any case, it contains nothing of which your brother is unaware. Touch nothing on the desk, Mr. Holmes. You should consider all this as the Queen's personal property. I am her appointed guardian. You are nobody. That's quite general, isn't it? It is specific enough for you, Mr. Whitney. I expect your cooperation, as would my brother. What is the condition of the Dewar document, Mr. Whitney? In my official capacity, I couldn't comment. Now please leave. This room is restricted. Do not pull your counterfeit rank with me, Whitney. If you entertain dreams of advancement, I suggest you assist me. A classified document has been moving in and out of your reading room under your nose. I am innocent in all that. My behavior has been above suspicion, and there is no proof that it ever left this room. Certain senior ministers may feel differently. My brother certainly does. Is your position so strong that you're willing to run the risk? Now, if you please, I'd like to examine Dewar's formula. You're not on my list, Mr. Holmes. I assure you that it is in our possession, and further, that it is in perfect condition. Where was it discovered, and by whom? Ah, it was located here, close by, in this room, of course. Merely misplaced, I should think. I'm sure. I'd like to see it, handle it. No. Threaten what you will. My minister will support me. The formula is back, if ever it left. I should think your part in this matter is at an end. Which merely shows how little your thoughts are worth. The formula is alleged to have disappeared from this room. May I examine the premises? As a favor to your brother, I suppose I could allow it. But don't touch anything and don't bother the patrons. 
You're here on my sufferance, Mr. Holmes. Whatever you say, Whitney. When did you last see Thomas Pratt? It was the morning he reported the formula missing. Did you ever see him in company? Men, women, lovers, etc.? Once or twice, perhaps. A young man. We had no mutual friends. Who from the Ministry formed Pratt's circle of acquaintance? He spoke occasionally to Lord Lawton and was overly familiar with the ratchet woman. To others, he was merely civil. No enemies that you know of? None. Now, why was he murdered? If you truly don't know, you'll learn soon enough, Mr. Whitney. Can you imagine a connection between Pratt's murder and the theft or the return of the formula? No. I suspected that your imagination might not be up to it. Is there anything more that you wish to tell me, Whitney? There is, in fact, a great deal I would wish to tell you, Mr. Holmes, but I value my situation. I know you to be an ill-mannered extortionist, a bully with powerful connections, a likely pyromaniac and thief. Still, I say nothing, except to get out. There is nothing for you here. Civility might have saved you from your hard tuition, Whitney, but with a dolt such as you, I doubt it. The brown stain is water-based. Is it tea or coffee? Neither, I suspect. Not vegetable or animal matter. I'd wager it's an alkaline salt, and there's a hint of something bitter. Decisively bitter, but too faint to say more. Is it my imagination, or has the stain darkened slightly? I think you're right, Watson. I suspect potassium cyanide or theosulfate of soda. Both are photographers' fixatives. Both are light-sensitive. I'll analyze a piece of the stain in a sulfate solution. A yellow result will show I'm on the right track. Fine, Holmes, but please maintain the integrity of the document. Looks like a strong solution of potassium cyanide. The proper nitrate will provide the emblematic Prussian blue. You've got the result, but what does it mean? The formula has almost certainly been photographically copied. Our search continues. Won't be a moment, gentlemen. The sample portraits are my calling cards. Feast your eyes and help yourselves.
Remarkable picture of Lord Halliburton's affianced. Hargrove is skilled. The image is sharp and brilliantly finished. Best of all, it bears little resemblance to the woman herself. Without the legend, I would never have recognized her. Were she to retire from society, the photograph would enhance her reputation. The portrait probably makes better conversation. There's something odd about her costume. Do you see it? I defer comment. Fashion is not my field. Stitch Rumsey's expert opinion would be welcome. Things may not be what they seem here, Watson. Discretion must be our watchword. I'll follow your lead. It appears that Lady Lockridge was reluctant to have her own dubious taste exposed to scrutiny. That seems a harsh indictment. Bad taste is not the same as bad character. Do not reproach me for giving voice to a sentiment you share. I saw your expression at her home, and I observe your expression now. You're right. I should know that round you I can never seem to be better than I am. Nor can the photographer, Doctor. Pay attention to him. Lady Lockridge's misgivings may be based on more than society's gossip. Mr. Hargrove, my name is Holmes. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I never haggle over price. You may check my book for an available sitting. Thank you, no. I merely require some information. Mr. Humes, is it? Information is not my business. I am an artist. You're too modest, sir. You may know much to my purpose. Your business is thriving in a competitive market. How do you account for your success? Quality will out. People of taste appreciate my work. Whom do you honor with red ink? My memory for minutia is terrible. Like all great artists, I must write down everything to do with commerce. Forget my own name one day. <laughs> you either began this business in infancy or your card contains a printer's error. Surely your studio was not established in 1846. No, yes, I mean, well, not precisely. The public appreciates a business with longevity. I, as it happens, was established on that date in 1846. I would have thought your clientele would reward a less traditional sensibility. But I'm not in business, am I? Born in a leap year under the sign of Aquarius, were you? Quite. I see you are on the national telephone. This is not an exchange, Mr. Humes. There is a public instrument in the post office at Marble Arch. Do people still sit for daguerreotypes in this day and age? It's time consuming, of course, but many of my discerning clients prefer the unique positive image. A daguerreotype is an unreproducible jewel of unmatched clarity. I saw the portrait you did for my friend, Lord Lawton and his fiancée. And you were impressed. They are a handsome couple, are they not? Might I do the same for you and your intended? Not at the moment. Do you use gold chloride to tone your paper? Never. My printing out paper is unique, sir. The finest Gordin gelatin silver. But instead of chloride, I use brom Ow. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> another salt. I trust you are not going to become a competitor. Where do you keep duplicate negatives? I have no storage facilities. What if Lady Lockridge were to lose or damage hers? 
A truly skillful photographer could achieve something with the positive, but that's beside the point. You had other business with me? You have developed a reputation in London, Mr. Hargrove. You must associate with a fine class of people. It is said that you are one of a handful of men with the skill to create composites. That is to say, bogus photographs? Flattering, but rubbish. Your source is misinformed. Composites are an expensive and potentially dangerous business. I wouldn't consider it. Most studios now use the collodion development process, do they not? They do, and I say let them. I provide choices. My unique collodion technique produces distinctively excellent results which cannot be imitated by any jackass who calls himself a photographer. Is not all collodion development basically the same? Phenol to reduce, sodium sulfide for control, and the thiosulfate solution to fix. <laughs> Excuse my snorting. Your ignorance is common. I won't divulge my methods, but I will say, for example, that cyanide in skilled hands is a better fixative than thiosulfate could ever be. I believe I've happened upon a sample of your work, Mr. Hargrove. You're a collector, then? I'll have to number you among my admirers, Mr. Helms. The name is Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. I've heard that name, I'm sure. What do you have? You've been playing a very dangerous game, Hargrove, and I intend to put you out. You'll want more privacy, I think. Let's go in back. You have no special privileges here. Go peddle your ridiculous accusations elsewhere, or I shall call the police. No, Mr. Hargrove. The tables have turned. I may call them myself. Remark, Watson. Pornography is so predictable. That is a libelous characterization. I am an artist. We won't argue the point now. Let's just say you're an idiot.
Given his pension for self-promotion, why is none of his work displayed? Perhaps it is too artistic for exhibition. True. Salacious subject matter thrives on reputation, but it requires occasional viewing. Perhaps he keeps his naughty bits secreted away, as young boys hide French postcards. No doubt your avocation is more lucrative than conventional portraiture. My business is hardly your concern. To your misfortune, Hargrove, you and what you are pleased to call your business have become obsessions. Watson, you might ring Lestrade. Tell him to bring a warrant for this reprobate. We're dealing with a habitual criminal, traitor, pornographer, and who knows what else. Hold on now, you're not the police. Don't be hasty. Mr. Hargrove, I'm in a position to do you very little good and a great deal of harm. Is that intended as a warning? It is simply a fact. Remember it as we speak. If you insist, Mr. Holmes, I shall try. It must queue up as one of many urgent claims on my memory. Whose telephone number have you kept? Is it Scarrett's? Please, Mr. Holmes, I beg you. If you expect me to care, you'll have to say more. I cannot! I will not! You face ruination and prison, and still you will not help yourself. Who is capable of causing such fear? Not Scarrett, I think. Silence will neither serve nor save you, Hargrove. When I find this fiend, then I will. I'll let it be known that you betrayed him. I have no doubt that this is what Lawton was afraid of. This is what caused him to agree to terminate the Ministry investigation. I'm hopeful that you'll explain yourself. A photographer's chemicals have much in common with those used in the manufacture of explosives. I'm a novice, as you witnessed. Cellulose nitrates are the basis of high explosives. Is our photographer a bomber? I doubt it, and so do you. Do you know the woman in the photo? She certainly looks familiar. She should. It's a somewhat younger Alexandra, the Princess of Wales. The plan was diabolical, Watson, and I've been a dunce. Early on, I dismissed the idea of a compromising composite. Not surprisingly, the idea never crossed my mind. But why did you reject the notion? I refuse to believe Lawton so weak as to risk his nation's security on the strength of a bogus picture. Even one that might scotch his marriage prospects. I never dreamed that a royal person would be fitted up as his fictitious partner. I see. Circulation of such a photo would initiate a scandal. It would sully the monarchy, shake the government, and ruin his personal hopes with Lady Lockridge. His behavior becomes comprehensible, but not forgivable. He is culpable in this matter. There is still a price for foolishness, though he may not have to pay it in public. Central Exchange? This is the Lord Mayor's office. A document here requires urgent delivery, but I only have the party's telephone number. Can you supply me with the address, please? Holborn 232. That's just beyond the viaduct, is it? Thank you. Mystery importing indeed. Please connect me to Holborn 232. I beg your pardon. Wrong number. Someone is there, Watson. Excellent. Are you ready to proceed, Doctor? The case increases in interest. And in danger, I imagine. 
Should the police be notified? I'd rather circulation of the stories of the ministry theft and the extortion involving a royal person be severely restricted. Perhaps Hargrove should be immobilized. I wouldn't want Major Mystery or Scarret prepared for our arrival. No. Hargrove has parted company with the Major. If he follows his form, the Major will demand swift and violent retribution for the betrayal. Lestrade affords him the only protection he can expect this side of heaven. He won't do anything that might alienate the institution that can protect him. Do we understand one another, Hargrove? Perfectly. I never saw the formula or the royal person. You were never here. Give me the telephone. Perhaps Lestrade could find me a private cell while his office undertakes a lengthy investigation into an accusation of pornography. I'll suggest it. That wasn't too difficult. Let's not announce our presence. Should you weary of your work, you might consider a career in unlawful entry. Your expertise exceeds that of a cat burglar. What do you make of the place, Watson? It appears a rather moribund enterprise. Locked in time. Lost its vital signs decades ago. It's known as a front from the French facade. I'm sure Mystery conducts all manner of illicit activities from here. Major Mystery. Odd sort of moniker, isn't it? I wonder if it's a proper name at all. I believe I hear snoring. Pipe down then. Our advantage will be lost.
The key's in place, but my pinky's too big to shift it. I heard a distinct clink. We've likely lost the element of surprise. I'm an idiot, Watson. Nonsense, Holmes. Perhaps it didn't fall far from the door. If he hasn't heard us before now, that noise won't alert him. If you wish to visit Bart's as a patient, that door's solid oak. Gentlemen, I was resting my eyes. I didn't... Stay where you are, mystery. Speak when spoken to and keep your hands in view. Mycroft might be interested in this, or perhaps Scotland Yard. I'm sure we need none of that at 221B. It may be evidence. Of what? Those who live in glass houses. I take your point, Watson. Are you trying to cause a hernia? Major mystery, 
I am Sherlock Holmes. Were he here, I'm sure Mr. A, that's M-I-S-T-E-R-A-Y, would excuse your common mispronunciation of his name. I am Jeremiah M. Story, an acquaintance. If you like, why not Jose Ray Martim? Never mind. Awful by any other name smells the same. Your speech, Mr. Holmes, is as offensive as your presence is unwanted. To what do I owe this unorthodox intrusion? To crime, you scoundrel. Your crimes and those of your despicable surrogates have brought me here. Your insidious scheme has unraveled completely, Mr. A. Will you confess your part in it? I would deem your declaration to be less than worthless if I knew what you were talking about. Your plan to sell Professor Dewar's formula to von Bismarck is ruined. Your client has killed himself, and his copy of the formula is seized. The crimes committed to support your plan have failed. I'm about to tie an adamantine knot around a large and cruel conspiracy, and you are the rope. Plain enough? Talk is cheaper and your time less valuable than I had imagined. Where is the key for this drawer? I have no idea. I don't believe Mr. A keeps anything in there. A locked drawer with nothing in it? I don't think so. Empty your pockets. Like an East End Doss house, this entire affair reeks of drugs. Tilt on, Mr. Holmes. That's not illegal. In any case, I'm just a visitor here. Perhaps I can make you sorry that you've extended your stay. You've already accomplished that modest goal. You share artistic tastes with the depraved photographer Hargrove. Whoever that is, presumably it is not a crime to appreciate a great art. No. But it is the other side of lawful to possess it without the benefit of a bill of sale. I'll tell Mr. A you were concerned. What are these fish? Aurora and Borealis, fascinating creatures. They're Amazonian piranhas, the world's most predacious and voracious cherasines. Suitable companions for you, I'm sure. You are many things, Mr. A, but not slovenly, I think. My name is Story. Why do you address me incorrectly? What can your name matter? However you call yourself, you are certainly a villain. How long has the aquarium been here? I have no idea. It's not mine, as I've said. You are not quite as bright as I've been led to believe, Mr. Holmes. I won't be distracted by puerile insults. I merely state an opinion. Such chicanery is beneath me. Nothing is beneath you. You are the sort of contemptible outlaw who coerces others to do his bidding, a completely amoral puppet master. And I will stop at nothing to destroy you and your agents. I have nothing more to say to you, Holmes. Call in the hobnailed boots if you wish. My solicitor will deal with them. How do you find the mastermind of this criminal enterprise? Appearances must be deceiving, Holmes. He looks like my estate agent. Do not underestimate him, Watson. The range of this conspiracy is decisive proof that behind the tranquil facade lives a malignant brain. He commands a network of thugs and vulnerable dupes. No crime is too great for their collective contemplation and execution. In every man's misfortune, he sees an opportunity to do harm.
Have you lost your mind, Holmes? Control your temper. You'll only mutilate your hand. That glass is specially hardened. Couldn't break it with a hammer. I will have that trident, Watson. You are cruel, Mr. Holmes. Poor, defenseless creatures. It is typically repulsive and perverted that you reserve your sympathy for things vicious by nature, rather than inclination. Look here, Watson. Evidence, so dear to the heart of Scotland Yard. Are you still smug, Mr. A? I think so little of your acumen, let alone your evidence. Silence will serve me best. None of those things can be tied to me. <laughs> I don't wonder you've lost your voice. All your plans have now gone south. Your attempt to compromise British security has failed utterly. What have you found, Holmes? Enough to cook a very tough goose. German currency, a wad of fibers, and the photographic negative of Dewar's formula. This string is played out, Mr. A. Where is the scurrilous composite of Lord Lawton and Princess Alexandra? Does Vincent Scarrett have it? You continue to allude to matters about which I have no knowledge. My eye, I'm sure you've insulated yourself from direct involvement in these several crimes. As you won't give up, Skerritt, we'll let Scotland Yard and your underworld colleagues sort it out. I'll parcel out the details in my own manner. The report will not show you in good light. Vincent is like a son to me, Mr. Holmes, but I'm truly mortified by these vile allegations. If he has wandered beyond the bounds of good judgment, and it appears from what I've seen and heard that he might have done, I could hazard a guess about where he might be found, providing Lestrade and the others you mentioned may be kept out of this. I'm listening, Mr. A. Naturally, I will have to test your veracity. A nasty den on the river is his favorite haunt. The place has a nautical name. Vincent's a bit rough on the margins, with a few unfortunate habits. Your appraisal is too modest. He is in fact a brutal killer, a cruel extortionist, and an unredeemable villain. That as may be. But you'll discover he's as docile as a house cat. I warn you, any calumny against me will fall on deaf ears. He may turn mute. I will find his tongue. The connection between Skerritt and Pratt is finally clear, Watson. They were opium eaters. Indeed. I didn't see it. I don't see it still. Hargrove saw it. And Lloyd-Jones smelled it. The two met, smoked, and shared secrets common to their addiction. Unbeknownst to Pratt, Skerritt was trolling for information, and he hooked it. You mean he learned that Pratt was a ministry clerk with access to sensitive documents? Yes. He learned all about Mycroft's ministry committee. The foibles and frailties of the members would be well known to Pratt, especially Lawton. They would be fine topics for conversation. So Skerritt coerced him to steal the formula with something he learned during their sessions. What might they have had on him? Debts. 
evidence of unethical or immoral behaviour. Perhaps they threatened him with death or mutilation. I've been gathering wool, Watson. I had this information and didn't put it together. You stay here. I will see Skerritt in his den or know the reason why. Will you go alone? Hold on. I thought our business was completed. I've given you, Vincent. You were mistaken. Skerritt is a servant, and you are his master. He can do everything for you except serve your jail sentence. Easy, Holmes. Haste makes waste, or whatever cliché might bring you to your senses. Let's bring Lestrade into this now. Do you think Skerritt will simply slink away as the net closes around him? The man is capable of anything, and he tried to kill my brother. Your zeal has overcome your judgment. Don't be rash in your rush for revenge. If you go to that den as you are, you'll come to harm. Don't fear. I will travel incognito, but I must take my chances alone. He must not get wind of all that has happened. Guard Mr. A. Watson. Farewell. We shall meet again. Damnation, blast, and bloody hell! Oh! Merd! Go and eat! Oh! Blast your eyes! Merd! Wish thy nether! Oh! Shovel! Oh! Tear a new ear hole! You what? Bugger off! Oh! Shut your hole, matey! Did it hurt? Damn your cheek! Uh, Take a hike! Go in east! May I purchase a packet of matches for my pipe? Matches is gratis for my customers in back. Smoking tobacco is a filthy habit. I sell alcohol here. If you don't want to drink, take a hike. I smell something strange. Perhaps I'll just walk back there. And I'll tear you a new ear hole. Entrance is by special permit only. You ain't welcome. Seamen, sailors and their friends. That's who I cater to. Did you know Thomas Pratt? Take a hike! Not by a name. Who sent you? Nobody sent us. I don't want nobody here that nobody sent. Damnation Damn. blast and bloody hell! Nosy persons give me ulcers. Damned if they don't. I could ask the authorities to take an interest in your establishment. Wait till Tuesday. The number three from the Scotland Yard is here with his secretary. Never misses. Now take a hike before you hurt yourself. I need a nautical ensemble, Stitch. Can you help? A late invitation to a dress ball, Mr. Holmes. Never go wrong as Lord Nelson. Mm, Admiral of the Fleet is too patrician. Something much further down the ranks would serve me better. But there's plenty of seamen's gear in the back. A patch and spike will sell the look. Just return them as you found them. Has the move a, a more the t I'm not Any advice on how to carry off the disguise? Well, avoid arg or shiver me timbers, you'll do fine. You remembered us from the matchbox. It pays to advertise. You're moving in the right direction. Better have a gin to wet my whistle. Your whistle's almost drowned by the sound of it, mate, but I never argue with a sailor what knows his mind when he's carrying a marlin spike.
Shut up! That'll buy you a cream tea at Lions or something stronger in the back. You part ways to Nirvana. Merd! Give me a place in the back, mate. That's not how it's done, old salt. Been here before, have you? Seen your mug half a dozen times, you Tasmanian devil. There's something familiar about you. You know my rules, then. They just slipped out of mine. No strangers. No credit. No noise. No exceptions. You've got your Luca. The matches is my bona fide, alright? Fine as far as it goes, mate, but you still owe me something. I'm trying to lose my troubles and you put more in my way. Just protecting my business. I got a reputation. Can't let just anybody back there. Now tell take me what hike. I want to hear or take a hike. Merde! You and your parrot aren't Freemasons, are you? Or explorers? Damnation blast and bloody hell, what are you talking about? Nothing, I suppose. Don't play around. You've worn out your welcome. What's the word? I think I remember the word you're looking for. I'm all ears. All right, Take then, go on through. Pipes are on the left. Remember now, no trouble, no noise. Merde! Deranged as you are, Skerritt, I'm not surprised you seek consolation in this den of iniquity. Interfere with me at your peril, sailor. You don't know what you're dealing with. False. You're a vicious criminal. Fortunately for the rest of us, your competence is not equal to your intent. My brother survived the outrage at the Diogenes, young Silverbridge is safely rescued, and the Ministry formula never left the country. Even in your brutal and senseless murder of the hapless Pratt, you lost your gun. Not a good innings for you. Consider yourself detained. You'll be hanged at Crown expense. It's the great Holmes, is it, in that sailor gear? Go peddle your papers. The police have no proof I've committed a crime. Not yet. But I have a witness who saw you execute Pratt. Your defeat is total. Your paramour is dead, likewise your Prussian client. The ill-gotten money has been seized along with your patron. Incidentally, contrary to popular opinion, there is no honour among thieves. Mr. A betrayed you in an instant. Did you think you would talk me into submission? I should have done you on the Cambridge train. I didn't see the reason then, but it's clear I might have saved myself some trouble. So to all, vermin.
Drop it, Scarret. Your real trouble is about to begin. Fine disguise, Holmes. Your mother wouldn't know you. But what's happened here? I heard shots. Scarrett gave me no selection, Watson. He is dead by a bullet from his own gun, and disposed of. Perhaps Needham will make a half-crown from his body. What was I playing at? I should have known he would have had another weapon. Where is Mr. Ray, by the way? I handed him over to the inspectors you sent. They slipped the derbies on him and led him off. The diabolical sod is clever, Watson. He deceived you. I sent no one. Pride goes before the fall, they say. We'll get another chance at him. I'm feeling a bit unsteady, Holmes. Might we leave? Of course, Doctor. A wash and a stiff scotch will set us to rights. The man who tried to kill Mycroft is dead. I rather wish I didn't feel so good about it. It will pass. Mycroft must be informed. I don't relish the prospect of seeing Matron again. Perhaps she's warmed to you. No more than a lap rug might warm the polar cap. I'll write to him first. We'll look in on Mycroft when he returns to the arms. Yes, so your message said. <clears throat> Wonderfully detailed, by the way. The minister was most impressed. Your discretion was widely appreciated. The death of this scarlet fellow was unavoidable. You had no choice. I didn't think your health enough improved to attend my funeral. Most thoughtful. Hmm. Any news of his ludicrously named employer? Major Mystery is at large. Well, you tied up the other bits very nicely. Carter is pleased. I've heard from Silverbridge, even Lawton is chastened. You have just cause for celebration. Mr. Holmes, you're not resting. Matron specifically warned me that your brother would overstay his allotted time. He has interfered with your feeding. Very well, sister. He and Dr. Watson are just leaving. You may bring in that gruel masquerading as food. We only have a moment, Sherlock. I don't wish Matron to receive a bad report. My minister informs me that a certain gracious lady has requested your attendance at Kensington. Please wear a clean cravat. My thanks for all you've done. Best not keep her waiting. Be well, brother. Watson? My appreciation, Mr. Holmes. I don't mind saying that your account was more enlightening than the PM's. You're certain my grandson was not implicated in the travesty? Absolutely, ma'am. The Kaiser was truly outraged by the theft. His assistance in apprehending the malefactors was invaluable. Your sovereign and your nation are grateful for your discreet and expeditious handling of this delicate matter, Mr. Holmes. And if you will pardon the language, this mystery seems the scum of the earth. Your language is always appropriate, ma'am. I'm ashamed of my part in this, ma'am. I trust there is no reason for the Prince of Wales to learn of it. I should think not. I regret that Bertie is far from a model of discretion in these matters. And you are not culpable, Alexandra. It was that Lawton fellow. Lawton behaved a perfect fool, Your Majesty. But I was not blameless. I was so grateful when he cleaned up the awful mess Prince Eddie made. I don't believe I could have denied Lawton anything he asked. Perhaps I was flirting a little. Still, it was most unwise to have sent such a photograph. I apologize, ma'am. Ancient history, my dear. Think no more of it. This story need not leave this room at any time soon, Mr. Holmes. Indeed not, Your Majesty. The public, the police, and most of the government shall remain ignorant of the entire matter.
The formula is secure. The composite has been recovered. Most of the villains have paid the ultimate penalty for their crimes. I'm sure one of the late prince's charities can find a use for the Prussian's money. Thank you. Now, indulge me for a moment more. Brown, if you will. Customary position for services to country and crown. I dub thee Knight of the Distinguished Service Order. Arise. This honour, like the rest of this wretched matter, must remain a secret. I'm sorry. If I have rendered service to my brother, to my country, and to you, ma'am, I am justly and handsomely rewarded. Nicely said, Sir Sherlock. Doctor, Brown will show you out. A grateful and generous sovereign is a fine thing, Holmes. Indeed, but no better than a true friend. My thanks for all you did, Watson. The case has concluded, Watson. Are you near finishing your account? I've recorded most of its events, those I witnessed and those you told me about. But the historical record demands a summary. Some issues are not entirely clear. I am not surprised. This was a most peculiar and troubling matter. I admired your reasoning early on that the three investigations were linked. The suppression of the inquiry and the attempt on Mycroft were in support of the theft. Nevertheless, I lost my way through the investigation a number of times. You are not alone. I call to your attention the complexity of the conspiracy, its political, diplomatic, and military implications, the dazzling audacity of the villains, the calculated cruelty in support of treason. Is it any wonder we made a false start or two? I must say that it did not help that you were enraged by the attempt on Mycroft's life. I accept that criticism. My anger may have been as much of a debility as it was an inspiration. But I was not prepared for any solution to the matter which did not include the apprehension of his would-be assassin. Fortunately, he turned out to be a person we wanted for other reasons. Are you satisfied with the disposition of the committee members? They will answer to Mycroft. Everybody in this case but he was self-interested. To varying degrees, they were petty, mean, foolish, greedy, ambitious, vicious, or just plain stupid. Some had better reasons than others. Those will serve as mitigation. Why did you let Lot North so easily? The man is a self-righteous idiot who has gambled his way into debt and must make an unpleasant marriage to get out of it. My anger is spent, Watson. Should more lives be ruined by this wretched business? I could produce the chain of evidence that would cook his goose, but royal involvement made it very fragile. He will suffer for his deeds, I guarantee it. I suspect that you knew the composite was the crux of the case much earlier than you revealed to me. That is a just and succinct summation, Watson. We should let it rest there. Amazing, Holmes. Should I live one hundred years, I'm sure I shall never meet your equal. My thanks, Watson. 
Major Mr. A, I think, would warmly disagree with your generous praise. No doubt we shall have to deal with him in time. There was no real acquiescence in the man. He will find another cat's paw to do his bidding. I believe I could sacrifice my life gladly if such a man could be eliminated. The Bosworth Emeralds have gone missing. Disappeared into thin air, apparently. Police are mystified. That's hardly newsworthy. It's their natural state. You'll be asked to put your head to that puzzlement before too long, or I'm no judge of the skills of Scotland Yard. Speaking of which, how was your interview with Lestrade? He's not happy. But what can he do? His corpses are identified, the crimes which caused them are solved. He's ignorant of the political implications, of course. Speaking of which, I suppose Bismarck's future is not very bright. I shouldn't be surprised to see him dismissed ignominiously in the near future. I don't know if that will be a good or bad thing for the Kaiser. Or for England. All of Europe is tending toward a tizzy, Holmes. When the old queen dies, there will be war, I'll wager. I'm afraid you may be right. Fights among families are often the most bitter. Still, she's good for some years, I imagine. We will keep her confidence, won't we, Doctor? I've taken measures, Holmes. The privacy of the royal family will be protected. For a century, anyhow. Play that phrase again, will you? Thank you. 